If you've ever found yourself pouring way too much time into a business presentation and thought to yourself, man, there has to be a way I could do this better, you are right, there is. And in this video, I'll be walking you through exactly how you can do this for yourself to completely fix your workflow and save hours of your precious time, all while making better presentations in the process. Before we get started, let's look at a real world example of how much better business presentations can be without needing a full design team. Lloyd Parker is the Vice President of Programs and Solutions at T. White Parker Associates. And before he started using a no-code AI integrated tool like Pictochart, his workflow looked something like this. Start in PowerPoint, make some graphics better in Illustrator, search for a design model, then rely on YouTube videos to figure out how to make it all come together. As he put it, it was very complex and it took a lot of time. And it wasn't all creative time, it was a lot of time trying to figure out how to use the tools. But once he switched to Pictochart, that changed almost immediately. Not only was he able to create clean professional visuals faster, but it completely changed how his ideas were received. One of his first infographics was for a railroad company, and it ended up making a big impression. He said, it was such a powerful graphic that they wanted to know how much we paid because they hadn't asked for it. And I said, don't worry, we developed it ourselves. They were like, wow, we didn't know you guys had that capability. Lloyd was able to surprise people with something that looked expensive, but was actually created quickly right inside Pictochart. So now that we've talked about some of the results people are getting, let me walk you through how I'd build a simple marketing campaign recap using Pictochart. This one's for a fictional brand called Wild Fern Co. And we're recapping their Mother's Day campaign. Let's head into Pictochart's AI visual generator to get started with our marketing deck. I have some details from this fake campaign that we're talking about that we will use in the AI generator to just give it a little more information as we get started. So our topic is our Mother's Day marketing campaign result for Wild Fern Co. skincare company. And then we'll paste in these additional details just to help it establish what we want to have in some of the slides. And because this is a result presentation, I'm going to go ahead and choose business and project as the topic. And then we will choose the generator. While I'm waiting for the content, I can choose to look at some of these other design options to see if there's anything that really jumps out at me as we're getting started. Now I have my Mother's Day campaign. I really like this one that I picked. And because we let it know that it was a skincare brand, it even went ahead and gave me some great images to start with. So we can go ahead and move this now into our save and edit our project. If I wanted to change the colors for this, I can go into the colors here and I can click onto my brand colors and it will change into my brand colors. I actually really liked the colors we started with, so we're going to keep it just like that. For our first slide, we have Mother's Day campaign. Short and to the point, I'm going to actually add results in here because we want to make sure that people understand what we're going to be talking about. And then I'm going to shrink this down a little bit to keep it more central on the page. Now I'm going to use my guidelines to center that. On the second slide, we will do a two column layout. We want to share what was happening in the campaign. So what the goal was and the timeline with the phases for the campaign. So we've already said here that the Mother's Day campaign goal was to drive sales of the spring comfort box and the campaign budget was $2,500. So now I'm going to go and add a little timeline. So I went to design components and I went into timeline lines and I was looking for something with phases. So we've got this phase version here. I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to center that on this box here and then I'm going to edit that to match the phases that we have in our launch and the colors and all of those pieces. So I'm going to ungroup it so that I can make those changes. I'm going to change that purple to one of my colors here and I'm going to change the font to the one that matches what we were using otherwise. So we're using Arvo. I'm going to change this to Arvo and then change that color as well. Our phase zero is prep. And that was to finalize the concepts, the budget, the asset that took place April 1st through the 14th. So we will change that here and we'll change that color. Our phase two was the T's. April 15th through the 21st. And then our final phase was our final push with last chance emails and retargeting. So now we have a great slide with the overview of our campaign and the visual of the timeline. This will be really easy for anyone who wasn't involved to understand what happened in the marketing campaign. We are going to move into an impact slide. The goal of this is to really make it easy for people to see what the results were from the campaign. So we're calling it out with a headline that says impact 
and then our campaign results exceeded expectations across orders, AOV, and conversions. And to show this, I want to use icons and the values that we had. So I'm going to first go into my icons and I'm going to look for a money icon. And I have lots of different options here. So I could do something more cartoonish or something a little bit more serious. I'm going to choose this dollar sign. So my next one is orders. So I'm going to look for a, like a shipping box. And I want to try to find icons that have similar weight to them so that it will look really consistent. And I can use all of my grid lines. So this is going to line up in the center. And now I can expand it a little bit to try to make it the same size as the other one. Now I want to grab something to represent the average order value. So I think I'm going to look for a receipt. So we're going to go with this receipt here and then shrink that down a little bit. And then we need to grab one for conversion. We're just going to use a check mark. I think this one has the most similar weight. Now I'm going to use the alignment tools quickly to align the middles. And then I'm going to distribute these horizontally so that they are evenly spaced. And then I can move them until they're centered on the page. So now those are centered. I might actually make them a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to ungroup them, space them out a little bit more. And then I will use those alignment tools to clean them up again. So now I need to just add a headline and the values. So I'm just going to copy this text here as the starting point, And I am going to change that to center orientation. And in all caps, I'm going to write revenue, shrink that down and center that there. I'm going to duplicate that, snap that to the center of that image. This is my orders. Duplicate that again, AOV for my average order value, and one last time for my conversion. And now I want to make sure that my numbers really stand out. So I'm going to use this headline and this bold color and use that for my numbers. So we did $38,000 in sales. Duplicate that. We had 430 orders. Our average order value was $89 and our conversion rate was 3.8%. Now I quickly have a slide that really shows the metrics that I want to make sure are understood and the visuals help them to really land quickly with the dollars, the orders, the receipt, and that conversion check mark. Now for our next slide, I want to talk about the channel performance. And this is a great place to use a chart. I added a bar chart and I added my data. So I added my channel and my channel name. I added my revenue and my spend. So I can see that Meta was my largest sales and and email did really well without any spend while Google underperformed. It makes it so visual and it's so easy to set up. I simply had to add that data there and then I can manage the different settings on whether or not I want to include titles and how I want the labels to look and the fonts and I can make that right within the slide. This is a great place to use a chart to actually establish what we're talking about because it's so evident with the chart versus other options that we might use in the slide. Now we wanna make a slide that talks about what worked in the campaign and what it didn't. Now this is a very simple simple slide and especially great after we had that very visual slide to have just some simple bullet points. We want to make sure here that we don't put everything into our bullet points. We want to speak to the information, not just put it into the bullet points here. So we did a very simple headline with our wins and our misses and trying to make sure that we're really giving some distinction between those two sides with the colors. So just added a little bit of a background layer and then our wins and our misses and all of our bullet points. I did bold one of the bullet points in each because I think that it helps to call out the most important things on the slides. By the way, if you want to try this out for yourself, just head to the description and click the first link to get a free trial with 50 AI credits to start creating your own presentations. Now we're on to the final slide. And this is a fairly straightforward one because we really just want to recap what our next steps are for the company. And what's great here is I just wanted some simple bullet bullet points. And I was able to use the design component comparisons to get an idea of what a good layout might look like. So I got some ideas about spacing and some icons to use here. So I simply drag this onto here as a starting point, and then I can modify that as I want to. And what I landed with was a simple next step with these bullet points about our decisions and our what we're going to move forward with. So our meta momentum, our mobile fixes and our bundle strategy. So just like that, we have a full recap deck that is built in minutes and it's fully branded and it's totally ready to share. Now that is what I love about using PictureChart because you're not just making slides, you're telling a story with real business impact. Let's imagine that we're in the room giving this presentation. So we're on our first slide and we wouldn't just read that because there's not really much there. We instead we open with the hook. So we might say something like over the course of a four week phased rollout, we helped Wild Fern Co position a single product as the go-to premium gift and turned that into over $38,000 
dollars in revenue, no discounts, just smart timing and strong storytelling. So that's the setup. And the title slide lets them know, yeah, we're talking about campaign results, but what we voiced over made it so much more interesting. And now we're on to slide two, where we're gonna set the stage. And instead of just listing the dates or reading off the timeline, we wanna walk the audience through the arc of the campaign. We wanna let them know why it was structured the way it was. So we might say something like, this was a short intentional push built around three key phases. We started with early awareness window to introduce the spring comfort box. Then we had a main conversion phase in the lead up to Mother's Day, and we wrapped it all up with a last chance urgency play in the final days. That phase timeline that's on the slide visually anchors the rollout, but what I'm adding here is the why behind the pacing. We wanna make sure that we're not just reading the things that our audience can already see on the screen, but we're adding the context and our slides are backing up what we're saying. They're helping to anchor that information for our audience. Next, we're moving on to our performance highlights slide. And here's where we will just sit with it a bit. So we'll let everyone sort of look at the numbers for a minute, and then we'll start diving into those details. Something like, we brought in just over $38,000 in revenue with an average order value of $89. Nearly 4% of visitors converted, which is well above the benchmarks. Then I would pause again to let the layout speak and let people absorb the win. This is a very very simple slide and great because the visuals are really the most important piece. Next, we would move on to that channel breakdown and say something like, now I want to connect the dots. You'll see that Meta drove the lion's share, $20,000, while Google wildly underperformed. But here's what surprised us. Email did over 10K with no spend. And here we let the bar chart hold the comparison so that we can tell the story. And we always wanna call out the most important insight, not just the info. So we could just read through that, but we want to say something like, Meta worked, but it worked when we use real customer testimonials. That way we're sharing a takeaway, not just a number. We're sharing why those numbers matter and how we can continue to use that information moving forward. Next, we have our simple bullet point slide. But this is the turning point of the deck because we want everyone to understand that we're not just sharing our wins, but we're also evaluating the entire process honestly. This helps to establish trust. So we'll start with the win side. Bundling drove that increase in average order value by 12%. And a last chance email open rate of 42% is high above what we expect and absolutely wild. But we missed on our mobile. Our bounce rates were way too high and we have to understand what's going on there. We wanna make sure we don't skim over these things because we want to make sure that we're establishing our credibility and our honesty. And last, we bring it home with our forward momentum. So we talk about what we're doing with all of that information that we brought to the table. So here's what we're doing next. We're doubling down on meta and we wanna make sure that we are getting creator content because that is what's resonating most with our audience. We're redesigning our mobile flows. We have an entire workflow flow already planned to get it ready before our summer gifting. And we're building new bundles going into holiday. We have so many ideas based on what we learned throughout this campaign. Notice that I'm speaking with ownership and more content than what's on the page. I want the audience to feel like I have a plan because at the end of the day, the numbers tell a story, but it's how I'm presenting them that determines whether they will actually land and they will be remembered. Now, I was only able to get into so much depth in a shorter video like this. And if you want to really get the best results you can with creating an infographic, there's tons of tips and tricks you can find over here that I wasn't able to show you in this video. So if you want a more in-depth design video, go watch my step-by-step -step video on creating a killer graphic that you can use to draw in your audience's attention before blowing their minds with your new found presentation skills. If you're ready to make yourself stand out against the crowd, I'll see you in the next one.